By the way, about here, Kyle, the Monster Nelson coming in at plus 210 against Fernando Padilla coming in at minus 260. Over under two and a half rounds, plus 155 for the over, minus 185 for the under. Padilla, second fight in the UFC here. His uh, UFC debut was against Julian Arosa. Got a first round knockout in that one. Some would say early stoppage, but either way, he landed damn near two knockdowns within like 10 seconds. So probably not. A great stoppage, but not a bad stoppage considering everything that uh, went on with that. He has some decent losses, you could look at it, on uh, the regional scene. One to Dan Ige. Uh, he's got a win over Derek Minner, ex-UFC guy. I lost to Spike Carlisle. Uh, so he's fought some pretty solid competition even before coming into the UFC. For Kyle Nelson, 2-2-1 two, two and one in his last five. Uh, that, that draw was to do Ho Choi. And that was uh, kind of a gift of a draw. He probably <laughs> lost that one, but they had that point deduction. And then he gets a, a fight at in Canada, UFC 289, gets a win over Blake Builder, which at the time looked like a good win. But then you look and see Blake Builder's only win is in the UFCs against Shane Young, and you're like, all right, never mind. That's uh, yeah. not the great, not like a, a win that age is the best. So he's 2-4-1 and one in the UFC. I mean, he's coming in here. I would kind of want to say to get booted out against Fernando Padilla, Mexican Independence Day. You're getting a kid in Padilla who uh, first-round knockout in his debut. Looks like a good matchup for him. Do you think he pulls it off, or can uh, Kyle the Monster pull off the upset? Yeah, for Kyle Nelson, like you said, with the last fight against Builder, it's a good win, but at the same time, Builder's only fought or only beaten Shane Young, who's probably getting cut by the UFC. If you look at Kyle Nelson's record, He's losing to guys like Jai Herbert and Quarantillo, who both, you know, with Jai, he's long and lanky as well, like Padilla, has the good striking, he's accurate, and he just couldn't really, you know, figure it out with Jai. And for Padilla, you know, he's long, he's a sniper, he showed that against Erosa, great striking, but he gets the majority of his wins on the mat. So if Kyle Nelson wants to get a takedown here, he's going to have to watch the neck. If he wants to take this thing to the ground, which I think is his only path to victory, he's going to be in danger too when he's on the ground. So... Um, all things to consider, I think this is Padilla here. I don't know if people are, you know, thinking Kyle Nelson after the last one against Builder has a chance to do it here, but I think Padilla is a guy that has a ton of room um, to grow into a really good fighter in the UFC. I think his ceiling's really high. I think he's dangerous wherever this fight goes, and this is just the style that uh, does not favor Kyle Nelson because I think Kyle Nelson's a little slower at this point. His head movement's not that great. He gets hit. I mean, his, his numbers, he gets hit with over four and a half significant strikes per minute while he's only landed three. So, um, yeah, man, for Padilla, I think he's riding that that good momentum and that confidence after the Erosa win. And I think he can go out there and he can touch Kyle Nelson. If Nelson wants to take it to the ground, I think he could find the sub here too. Yeah, it's uh, somehow Kyle Nelson finds a way to make every fight boring. And in this one, I think that's probably his best, best path to victory is like make it boring because like you said on the ground, Padilla's got the submission game on the feet. It's going to be longer. He's got, I think he's got better hands. Kyle Nelson, I think, path to victory is to make it gross and throw him up against the cage. Use your strength. I mean, he was he's bounced from 155 and 145. So, I mean, he's a big, strong guy. Uh, five foot 11, and he, he's strong. He's still going to be shorter and, and not as long as Padilla, but he is strong and, and fairly big for the, the weight class. So, I think that's the only path to victory for Kyle Nelson. Padilla probably going to be uh, much snappier on the feet and uh, just overall higher ceiling for sure. Like, I think I hope this is Kyle Nelson's last fight in the UFC, to be honest. But Padilla, I think he's going to be my pick. Not crazy about the price, considering Kyle Nelson can make it close. But yeah, I'm going to take him for the pick.